there are things that we first disliked and grew to love. Just think about that fruit or vegetable that you used to hate, but now, when used properly, is fucking delicious. We experience this with film, music, art, television, even people. Ryan Reynolds is just one of those actors that I used to hate, but I realized I hated him for all the wrong reasons. From the old Tucson studios in Arizona, this is the One Minute History Podcast. Here's your host, the hardest working man on the internet, Casanaya. It's very easy to criticize. This is part of an interview with Louis C.K. that he did with Time Magazine. The thing that hit me was that the guy, I was standing with this guy, Sergeant White, and he said, he looked at the soldiers and he said, if this was Madison Square Garden, they would be uh, yelling and throwing stuff and wanting their money back. But these guys were just standing there, just waiting. It just broke my heart, you know? So I just went on stage and, I, and they were, in a, I mean, it's the best audience I ever had. They weren't like an audience of American consumers that are like, well, I wanted to see a show, it's for me. I, you know, and then they leave and they go, I, I wasn't crazy about the first, it wasn't really, didn't really work, just the way we are now. And then they, they'd write a f-ing blog the next day. Subpar show, not really great, you know, that kind of thing. These guys are like, this guy doesn't have a mic. Louis C.K. wants us to be more appreciative. To realize that this is as good as it's going to get. And go, yeah, this is as good as they make these right now. This is as good as it is. Thank you. I I said that. I was just quoting you. But this sentiment also informs how we criticize and demean just to make ourselves feel superior. Everybody has a phone in their pocket. They all go, this fucking thing sucks. I can't get it to think. Give it a second, would you? Could you give it a second? It's going to space. Can you give it a second to get back from space? Is the speed of light too slow for you, you non-contributing product sponge cunt? Can you just wait? Can you just... Take a little breath. I'm in the entertainment industry. And when you come across another person in the entertainment industry themselves who is easy to criticize, among highly creative people, uh, of which I think I am, we call those people no-talent ass clowns. They defraud your ideas because... The good ideas are not their own. They know that anything can be criticized. And only the truly talented know if that criticism comes from a genuine place of improvement or as some shitty political ploy to garner strength from another person's downfall. Do you realize that Starbucks wanted to take Christ and Christmas off of their brand new cups? That's why they're just plain red. In fact, do you realize that Starbucks isn't allowed to say Merry Christmas to customers? Well, I decided instead of simply boycotting, well, why don't we just start a movement? So So what is the difference between a celebrity who might deserve your hatred and those who get hatred undeservedly? Let's compare the subject of this episode, Ryan Reynolds, with someone we know definitively is deserving of our derision, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is a no-talent ass clown. Ryan Reynolds is not. Even if you were still hating on Ryan Reynolds, you have to admit that he is not a no-talent ass clown, and Kim Kardashian is. The Kardashian crew, in fact, are all no-talent ass clowns. So that is your new criteria to see if you are unfairly judging an entertainer. 
the original use of the No Talent Ass Clown moniker is from this famous scene in Office Space. Yeah, well, at least your name isn't Michael Bolton. You know, there's nothing wrong with that name. There was nothing wrong with it until I was about 12 years old and that No Talent Ass Clown became famous and started winning Grammys. Let me admit something to you about Office Space. I used to hate it. When I first saw it, I didn't like it. I didn't get it. But it stayed in my mind. I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about funny moments from it. And it grew on me very quickly. Now, that's happened with almost everyone who's seen it. Did you see the memo about this? I did the same thing with Fifth Element. This is probably the biggest example of from hatred to love. And uh, this is... Lilu Dallas Multipass. Other movies can be listed that people didn't like to begin with. The Big Lebowski. From one of my favorite podcasts called The Film Vault, Brian Bishop talks about how he used to hate The Big Lebowski. Did not like The Big Lebowski first time I saw it. Uh, had a couple laughs, but was mostly confused. Like, uh, are we supposed to like this guy? Why was, uh, there Other was, uh... examples of movies that some people initially hated? Napoleon Dynamite. Your mom goes to college. Anchorman. Boy, that escalated quickly. Even classic comedies like Airplane. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. And Blazing Saddles. Hey, boys. Look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? These movies were first met with derision. We have already heard from a prime example of this, and now classic cult film Office Space. Kung Pao Enter the Fist. From this day forward, you will all refer to me by the name Betty. <laughs> Clue? Yes, I did it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much it, it, the, it, flame, flames, flames on the side of my face, breathing, breath, heaving breath. Death to Smoochie. What's that speckle, what? what are you, blind? It's a cock! Wet Hot American Summer. No, no, I, I, I couldn't. Oh, they'd love it. No, no, I, I, I couldn't possibly. Do. Oh, it would be just. I it. said no! Blade Runner. She's a replicant, isn't she? I'm impressed. Total Recall, Dread, Mean Girls, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Donnie Darko, Fight Club, In the Loop, and The Flying Guillotine. At first, these movies were misunderstood and ridiculed. Now we look on them as seminal films that have influenced countless other films and filmmakers. The best among us publicly change our minds instead of stubbornly sticking to our guns when it turns out that that movie stuck in our head the right way. The top shelf film critic Roger Ebert, may he rest in peace, described a film from 1994 as the worst film of the year. That film would go on to make $200 million and launch the career of a superstar comedian. Roger Ebert asked him in an interview, how did I miss the point? The comedian responded, when you get a script like this, if you try and play it real, it would have been boring as hell. So I was looking to do something that was really unacceptable. Ebert changed his review of the 1994 film. What is this groundbreaking film? Alrighty then. Yes. Ace Ventura. This is double pane soundproof glass. There's no way that neighbor could have heard Pedactor scream on the way down with that door shut. The scream she heard came from inside this apartment before he was thrown over the balcony and the murderer closed the door before he left. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that? Jim Carrey wanted to do something completely unacceptable. This is actually a genius way of putting it because to him, his performance was only unacceptable up 
to that moment. His performance was radical on film at the time, but in the interview, he gives away the origin of how this performance was perfectly normal to him. Jim Carrey talks about working without a net. In the theatrical improvisation scene at the time, this is a very new concept and would breed dozens of comedians. Jim Carrey was just the first to exhibit this style on film. He was lucky in that sense, the first one to get there. This is why Roger Ebert found the style of the film so irksome. If he had visited Second City there in Chicago, uh, he might have already been familiar with the working without a net style. Everything in art that tries to introduce us to a new style, a new way of telling a story, will inevitably be first looked on as weird. In a future episode, we will talk about Lady Gaga as a seminal example of this. But that's in the future. For right now, let's leave ourselves with a movie I once hated. But right now, I have dropped my hatred and braced this small piece of cinematic comedy gold. The film is called Super Troopers. Sorry about that. All right, meow. And over your license and registration. Hurry up, meow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's something funny here, boy? No. Well, then why are you laughing, Mr. Larry Johnson? All right, meow, where were we? I'm sorry, are you saying meow? Am I saying meow? I, I, th I thought... You... Don't think, boy, meow. Do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> meow, what is so damn funny? I could have swore you said meow. Do I look like a cat to you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Am I jumping around all nimbly bimbly from tree to tree? No. <laughs> Am I drinking milk from a saucer? <laughs> well, do you see me eating mice? <laughs> hey, you stop laughing right now. One Minute History with Cass and I on YouTube and the podcast can only be heard if you share this with friends, post it, and talk about it with others. To support us, please visit OneMinuteHistory.com. And for everyone who has supported One Minute History, we thank you. Next week, we're going to be talking about Lady Gaga for One Minute History. My name is Cass Anaya. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. <laughs>